and never forget anybody can control a woman's body see but the key is to control a mind you see Pippin's big business and it's been going on since the beginning of time and it's gonna continue straight ahead till somebody up there turns out the lights on this small planet it's time once again for another Hour of Power TV prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah. <laughs> Greetings, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another Hour of Power. This is TV prayer. My name is the Reverend Ed Cash. Cash money, y'all. And I'm Reverend Dr. Carl Pathos. <laughs> And we're going to double team your faith today. Praise the Lord. That's right. We're going to reach down into your soul and get you in the mood. We're going to oh, get you excited. Reverend. We're going to make you feel I'm good. I'm telling you, if all I had was a clock in my pants, it would be high noon right now. Well, I think you need to keep that time to yourself, Reverend. Pardon me, then. No, today's lesson is about tithing. That's right. Now, I know we've talked about giving of 10% of your earnings. We talked about that last week and the week before. And we're going to keep talking about it till y'all get it right. We never get tired of that subject because the Lord says you must store up treasures in heaven and not on earth. That's right. That's why there's a hole in the ozone layer now. Because y'all being tardy with your payments. That's right. Now, some of you, some of you been trying to skate by on 5 and 6%. Nice try, but you cannot fool the Lord. Now, I'm going to read off some names right now, and I want you to stand up when you hear your name. Raymond Gary. Up on your feet. Dorothy Bell. Rise and shine. Joe Wilson. No, Joe. Now, your checks have bounced. Get out. I rebuke oh, you. Get out and take your fat wife with you. Go on. Get on out of here. That's a sin. That's an unforgivable sin. I can feel the sin in this room tonight. Uh, it is that temptation that would make a woman sell her body for upwards of $40, even though she wanted it as much as I did. Oh. <laughs> I think what Reverend Pathos is trying to say is that we've all sinned. Not like me. Well, we ain't all freakazoids like you, but we've all sinned. You see, that's why you're here today. But that's okay, see, because the Lord forgives. Amen. He's forgiven me and will forgive you too. He does. That's what he I does. know because I've talked to the Lord. Amen. I've talked to him in tongues. He can That's right. That's the only way to get to the Lord. He don't answer if you just say, hey, Lord, you got to speak in a tongue. And this hold, man on, can hold, do on, hold on. Hold on. I, I got a call right now. Oh, my goodness. It ain't been a little bit. No, no, little old this video. No, 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 and I'm back. And the Lord's in to tell you how. Woo! I got the spirit. I feel like healing. Yes, and I have a candidate like right here, Reverend, sitting right in front of us. Come on up here, son. What is your affliction, brother? I, I, I can't move my leg. You can't move your leg. Well, let me get the spirit. Let me put my hand on it. I think I feel it. Oh, here it is. This is what's been holding you down. This wall has been holding you down, brother. You are healed. Get on out of here. Oh. Praise the Lord. The spirit has been lifted. <laughs> Now you've seen the Lord in effect. You have seen it. You've witnessed the Lord's spirit. You were there. Now it's time to pay the Lord. Pay him all. Pay that man his money. Now while I collect the offerings, Brother Pathos here will lead us in a song. Brother Pathos. I think I saw him on the hill the other day. I think I saw him when I watched the children play. But when I opened up my voice to sing him praise, he ran away, ran away, fall away. I sing made sweet Jesus run away. I did not have to wait.
Strike for Judge Wait a minute, hold on. This ain't working. Oh. One dollar, what's this, one dollar? No, no, we tried to do it the Lord's way. Now we're going to do it the good old 125th Street 7th Avenue way. Give up the money now. Pay the Lord. You wanted heaven, now reach for it. Yeah, no, give me the oh, shoes. Right. Give it up. Give it That's up. Right, I want shoes. Now you're giving, brothers. You got the ankle tape. You're giving now. So Not what really. is this residential center? Oh, this is a, um, a place that the ministry owns. Well, not okay. own, we're, we're in the process of buying that. Yeah, we don't so own it yet. So are you renting to buy or? You yeah, we're leasing to buy. You have that as an asset of two point eight four four two million eight hundred forty four thousand five hundred. So do you own it? I just answered that, didn't I? I said we didn't own it. Okay, we but where to where does it. the I'm sorry? We're leasing to buy it. Did, did you I thought we just said that. All right, but yeah. you have listed it as an asset worth two million eight hundred and forty four thousand oh, dollars. Oh, oh, that should be more of a liability. All right, so where does the number Two million eight hundred forty-four thousand come from on your asset liability. Uh, that's, I guess, the appraisal value of the home or the residential center. Yeah. Is it a home? No, it's a residential center. We use it. All right. So you're saying it's not something you own, but you have it listed as an asset of two point eight million dollars. That's probably a mistake. Like I say, it probably should be a liability. Okay, and what goes on at the residential center? It is a, a really it's a gathering place for our ministry where I bring in um, different uh, leaders and also the staff that we have uh, as a place of, uh, you know, maybe um, resort and teaching. And training. Resort? Yeah, teaching, a resort where we teach and train. On November 29th, 2013, JMMI paid over $6,000 to Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. Yes. What would that be for? Well, this is for clothes concerning my TV ministry as well. Oh, you have to wear Louis Vuitton? Oh, it don't matter what name it is. The point is clothing are allocated to us for ministry purposes as well. What do you mean they're allocated to you? You know, in a media ministry. In a what? Media ministry. Yeah. Okay, or on the road, when I'm always traveling and using my clothes, I'm sweating through them. So I'm needing new clothes also for television ministry through the years, so. And so um, you use ministry money to buy your wardrobe? Outfit. Your it's outfit. called, it's allocated more towards uh, ministry um, apparel. Is that going to what your income is? I'm sorry. I Do you understand. show that in your income that you got Louis Vuitton clothing? No, that's not. That's that. That, that doesn't show. Because it don't go there. It don't go there. Mm -mm, I don't no, know what that means. It don't. 
belong there. That's out of place. What's out of place? You don't get taxed on things like that. That's for that's for ministry business purpose. So it's not Louis Vuitton. Well, it's you can call whatever you want. So June <laughs> 2014, you spent $3,500 by JMMI to Versace in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'm sure that's right. If that's if and, it shows there. And those were that was for closing for you. Yes, probably. Yes, most likely. So you, you don't see that there's any problem when you're ministering to the poor, the sick, the needy, to be appearing in Louis Vuitton and Versace? Well, that ain't something I purchase all the time. Um, no, it looks like you did several no, times in... Uh, I mean, I, I'm a very frugal person when it comes to this. I go to the right places to get a lot of suits. And if I get some from those places, you don't see that. You don't see, I don't see Macy's. No, you don't see that, you know, because Macy's don't have the kind of suits that I wear. But what I'm saying is this, this Louis Vuitton things, you don't see that in our charges all the time. 2013 <laughs> and 14, you spent over, GMMI spent over $30,000 in your clothes. Does that mm -hmm. sound about right? Uh, what, what year was that? 13 and 14. Oh, God, yes, because I was traveling so much yes, and, and sweating through all my clothes. Exactly. That probably wasn't enough because just have so but they have to be top of the line expensive ones no they're not top of the line clothes. louis vuitton's not top of the line those not where i get my suits from well you got something the from them for yeah. spent thousands and thousands well the the belts are more lasting so that's good come on you're buying belts for five thousand dollars no i mean I okay. multiple belts not august 2014 you went to the gucci store in troy and purchased something yeah um what like I say, be? it probably was a belt or maybe shoes. I, I don't belt know. Or shoes. But I don't usually buy my suits from these very expensive places. I just get the the things that I invest in will last longer, like such as belts. So you got to go to shoes. Gucci or places like that. Well, no, this I buy those things from there because uh, they have a better TV appearance for the belt. For asking for money shoes. from the poor. No, it's um, <laughs> you paid a thousand dollars to Monsieur Clothing in New York, and then another seven hundred and fifteen. Whose clothing was that for? Where is that now? I don't understand. August first, October twenty eighth. Total of over seventeen hundred dollars to Monsieur Clothing in New York. I don't. I'm not. <coughs> I don't know about that. You testified at your last deposition that JMMI owns three vehicles, a BMW, a Mercedes, and a Bentley. Yes. Have you driven those cars? Yes. Is Michelle? No. We usually have a driver. The three cars that we've talked about, in whose name are the titles? Um, they're in the ministry name. They're all in JMMI? I think... Everything except the Bentley. Whose name is the Bentley in? Uh, it's in DeWin McDill. I have a question, just from <laughs> a, you know, you minister the poor and the sick and all that. It, it does, isn't it a little offensive to be driving around in a Bentley and a Mercedes to people that really, um, you know, are impoverished and sick and ill and, and AIDS and drug rehab? Isn't it a little offensive to sort of being... Uh, show placing mm. what you have well dear one i, I don't uh show place to people and i'm i'm not well, in Bentley. that car you don't see me driving around in that car every day i don't do that but it's in you the know. ministry everybody <laughs> no. in the ministry sees you you said you drive it uh, i haven't before you just asked me have i drove it but it ain't something i drive every day or even every year i don't do that i have drivers who pick up my guests my high-profile guests. No. But do you see no. my point that people that mm -hmm. um, are suffering and giving you whatever their last <laughs> dime is and mm -hmm. in donations and mm -hmm. you know drug habits, mm -hmm. to have them see you drive around your high-profile guests in a Bentley or Mercedes might be offensive and hurtful even. It, it could be offensive if they didn't know my life, but they oh. know my life. It, it would be offensive to someone like you who's trying to make it bad, you know, okay. but... You know, so it's important you have a Bentley. 
It ain't really important. That don't make me. Then you also have um, a Land Rover that you lease. <laughs> uh, Range Rover. Range Rover. Yes, it's not a Land Rover. It's a Range Rover. Which is the better one? I don't even know. <coughs> I don't know. Um, just cars, the song. All right, then there's a series of documents that total almost $50,000. Mm -hmm. um, to limo land mm -hmm. in 2013 and 14. Um, mm -hmm. you, you have to answer yes. And yes. So. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. What was that for? That uh, was to cut the Mercedes into a limo. It was to cut the Mercedes into a limo. And who needs that? No, that's for guest. It's for guests and for you. It's mostly when for you're guests. entertaining guests. Yes. When you're entertaining. Well, I'm not. When we have guests come in, high-profile people, we mm -hmm. we um you we have treat to have a limo. them that way. Don't have to have a limo, but in, in we, a Mercedes limo, <clears throat> we treat them. You treat them. I said that we hospital have hospitality. Maybe that's a better word. <clears throat> Okay, then and this is not the first one the ministry has had. We oh, had that's another the first? Mercedes limousine. Oh. Yes, right. So, so you paid limo land almost fifty thousand dollars total. Almost fifty thousand. And that was to cut for them. what? To to make a limo. To cut the Mercedes into a limo. And, and you think that was a good use of the money that people donated to you in JMMI? Well, I mean the bank certainly. Um, have looked at that on our books is good because it has an appraisal value of almost 200k, a little over 150,000. So, but you got this from donations, and you decided to use it to make a limo. Uh, we really invested really good. The banks. No, no really I'm just asking that. if that's what you did. No, not the way you're saying it. It's you're fortifying, forging. I'm forging. Uh, with your mouth, they yeah. Just. The question is, okay. did you use the money for the purpose? No. The answer is yes. So. In June of 2013, there's over $6,000 worth of charges for the Disney Resort Hotel in Anaheim, California. Do you remember that? Yes. And did you go? Yes, I was there. Does JAMA my pay any of your auto expenses? <clears throat> uh, yes. And how much? Auto expenses? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know exactly how much. You don't know how much you get? No. Who the would board know? takes care of that. Who's uh, the board? You can ask Michelle. She's a, another person to refer to. What about your housing? Does GMMI pay any of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. You get a housing allowance? Yes. And how much is that? Uh, I'm not sure. And do you report these uh, allowances as compensation on your tax return? Um, Honestly, I don't know how all that work I have other people who does do that. So you can refer to Michelle on that. Michelle does your taxes? No, I have other people do it, but she's over a lot of that, the financial aspect. When you say it's up to the board, now the board includes <laughs> Michelle? Yes. You? Uh, yes. And who else? Um, I'm not sure you can ask Michelle. You don't know who's on the board? Uh, totally. I would rather you get the accurate information because I don't want to be accused of answering falsely like I have been other times when I've tried to guess so I just rather you I'm telling you I don't know just ask her Shall how many people know. are on the board I don't know just you don't know a, no don't you have to have board meetings uh, yes we do have board meetings so don't can you count around the table how many people <laughs> there are well our board also grows at the same time so I just rather you um, just get that information somewhere. Else. The last time you had a board meeting was when? Um, so on the phone, I think the beginning. It's been the beginning of the year in January. Can't exactly tell the the date, but it was on the phone. <coughs> yeah, I have never been to court for no criminal charges. <coughs> Did you ever that hire? An, pardon me. Go on. Did you ever hire an attorney? to uh, represent you in any criminal defense manner? Um, yes, I have. Um, and that was the only thing I could think of in 13 is um, me 
you know, when I disciplined my child, and that was the only thing. So I, I, I don't know anything other than that. Tell criminal. me about that one. Was that in St. Louis? Yes. Mm -hmm. And which child was that? Um, that was last year, I think, or well, the year before last, if I'm not, 13. So. Which child? Uh, Destiny. Your 18-year-old daughter? Yes. Mm -hmm. And was this done through Children's Protective Services? I think so, yeah. And what were the allegations? Well, that, um, that I had disciplined her because she skipped class 20 times and, and they felt me. Um, my discipline measure of using a belt was abusive. All right, so you, <coughs> you used a belt in disciplining Destiny? I don't know if I can speak on that. Uh, can I speak on this? Because uh, my, my lawyers told me about uh, then, I, Not knowing this, the status of those proceedings. Uh, is it resolved? Is it all done? It, it, um, I'm, I'm going to object to it. Well, let me oh. just ask if it's okay. what the status is. Um, you know. I don't know. All right, I'm not asking you to say what you did. I'm just asking if the mm -hmm. allegations were that you disciplined your daughter with a belt and caused... Okay. Uh, just gonna, allegations. Well, you, you may ask, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose a constitutional mm -hmm. protection. What's the mm -hmm. constitutional? I'm not asking him to say what he did or didn't do. Mm -hmm. Anything that might lead to or otherwise be might considered to be incriminating. I think mm -hmm. he's got a right I, to serve the I think right. he can tell me what the allegations are. That is not privileged well, Fifth Amendment or otherwise. Well, it is because he doesn't, if he doesn't know, he's I speculating don't. and I'm Well, he's privilege. not saying that. I don't well, know. I want to assert the privilege. It's absolute. Okay. Somebody wants to take it. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know who the lawyer is. He doesn't seem to know the condition of the matter. So to avoid any kind of drift, and I think maybe you, you might be concerned about it as well. Well, is this, is this, uh, let me ask you, did this rise to the level of court intervention by the local court in um, St. Louis that, that does... Uh, don't speculate if you don't well, know. I, I please don't, don't know. testify for him. Well, I don't know. I Did mean, you go I'm to court sure. on it? Um, what court? What do you, any what court. You? Did you ever go to any court about these allegations that you disciplined destiny um, physically? LaBelle. So would the would family court be yeah. known as... If you know. Yeah, yeah family court. So yeah. you did go to family court. <laughs> Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what was the outcome of that? Is it done? Is it pending? I don't know. You, don't, you have no idea? No, I don't know everything. Is that why Destiny doesn't live with you now? Uh, yes. right here is called the pimp versus the preacher what's the difference all right what's the difference because I mean they both have the same qualities to a high degree when it comes to mentally controlling their followers they both like to dress in nice attire 
drive exotic cars, um, lust after very, very attractive women, um, and so on, all right? So my thing is, what's the difference between a preacher and a pimp? We gotta figure this one out, y'all. I mean, you gotta really think about this. Now, I live in the South, all right? So I live along what they call the Bible Belt. And there may be a church. You may have like three or four churches on every other block, okay? And this is not a, in a within a mile's range. This is like every other block and I'm straight up serious or more. I remember one time um, I was traveling and I know I counted like 11 to 12 churches within maybe two or three blocks. All right, now, question. We have so many churches down this way, but we have even more crime. You understand? So something's not adding up right, all right? Either the preachers don't know what the hell they're talking about, or the people that attend the church, the audience, or the congregation, Either they're just as lost. You understand? So something's not right. The same people that attend these churches, um, not just black preachers, so to speak, even the uh, so-called white preachers, you know, they're getting over too. You understand? The game is very lucrative. So that's why I want to speak on it. All right? I have a, a few questions. You know, I like to put these questions out to y'all so y'all can kind of think about it as well you know it's something to analyze now <clears throat> most people will say well it's not all pastors and preachers that's like that okay okay now that that's that's a good one that's a good one okay because maybe a small percentage is not like that okay but when you look at it to a high degree they're all like that, all right? Because first off, they won't tell you how to get the things that they get. You know, like a financial, like a business plan. Okay, step by step, this is what you do. Step A. Step B, this is what you do. You know what I'm saying? So they don't do that. So that further lets you know that um, they're crooks, all right? Only thing they do is tell you is to have faith in God. You understand? They tell you to look outside of yourself into some unknown entity instead of looking within, the God within. All right? And it's, it's really sad that our people follow this madness. I understand? But, like, if you walk into a church, see, it's easier to control women than men. All right? Men are not followers um, when it comes to religious texts like women are all right if you go inside of a church you'll mainly see women and children because they're easily led all right you may see a few men in there but it's a hell of a lot more women and children in there okay now i got 10 questions y'all i'm gonna start it off like this <clears throat> my first question does God enjoy gospel music? Yep, y'all heard me right. I'm going to ask it again. Does God enjoy gospel music? That's the first question. Now I'm asking that question for a reason because so-called black people, BT Awards, uh, Kirk Franklin, all of these people that say they love God and, you know, these clean-cut, uh, uh, rich punk motherfuckers, with they suits on, slick suits, all right? They always have gospel music playing. But it has nothing to do with spirituality. You understand? It has everything to do with controlling a certain point of your brain to have you stuck within that matrix of entering that building that they call church to further paralyze your mind, all right? So, does God enjoy gospel music? Would God say, well, I don't like that, you know, I, I want to hear that type of gospel music. You understand? Alright? Now, the Negro spirituals, 
they dealt more with spirituality than what these BET award guys do. All right, that's that's crazy. All right, that's my first question. <clears throat> Second question. Now this is dealing with how people give offerings to the church, pay tithes to the church. But the question is this: when you pay tithes to the church and you give offerings to the church where is it actually going okay where is it actually going and do you really care or do you just choose to ignore it because it may be going somewhere that's not benefiting you or the church so my second question is how does the church determine how much the pastor make okay how does the church determine how much the pastor make his salary or do they determine it all or does he set his own salary like a pimp think about it does he do it like a pimp he just get the money to get the finance you know pay for everything get you to attend and sell you a big dream okay because no one in this millennium millennium can say for a fact with proofs with proof that they've actually seen a guy come out of the sky and come down and save them okay so what kind of mental bliss the, the people the, what kind of mental bliss are the people really in just think about it alright so again second question how does the church determine how much the pastor make okay number three is the pastor's salary determined on how good of a preacher he is and or his skills to receive raises in the future? Because think about it. On a regular job, the only way you can advance is you have to prove that you know something in order for you to obtain a raise. You don't just get a raise. You understand? So how does the preacher get richer and richer and richer and richer how does that happen by fleecing the sheep that's how it happens all right my fourth question if the people are the sole providers to the pastor's wealth is it fair that they do a regular audit on the finances as they do with any other business think about it church is a business it's on paper it's in writing so who's doing the auditing okay when they do their um, board meetings or whatever all right are the people that funded the church in on the audit now I'm gonna tell y'all some check this out the quickest way to make a pastor mad, a preacher mad, because normally you don't really see preachers angry. They always have this soft tone. Hi, sister. Hi, brother. How you doing? Yeah, God loves you. They always have that type of voice, right? The quickest way to piss him the fuck off is like this. You ask him, where are the financial statements for the last couple of years in which all the offerings and tithes have been given by the audience or the congregation? He's gonna turn that soft-spoken, humble voice into this. Hey, you get the fuck out of my motherfucking face. That's what's gonna come up, all right? So the quickest way to make a preacher mad is to ask that question. I challenge y'all to ask that question. Why don't the people audit the church financial books? Why don't they audit it? Is it fear? Is it is it because they think God personally gave him the permission? to get finances from his audience or congregation or the people is it because of that or is it because god loves money so much actually does god need money why does he need money so much i thought it was about teaching i thought it was about learning all right fifth question collectively why don't brothers enjoy gospel music now I'm going back to gospel music. If you think about it, you don't really see brothers getting in the car 
with their rims playing gospel music. You don't see brothers walking down the street with headphones on. Even though you can't hear it, you can tell by the movement because music makes you move a certain way. Playing gospel music. Now, you might see the black church sissy in love with gospel music, but you don't see regular, normal, heterosexual brothers playing gospel music. Why is that? Tell I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. I don't like men no more. I said I like women. Women, 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 women. I said women. I'm not gay. I would not date a man. I would not carry a purse. I would not put on makeup. I will. I will love a woman. Because it's something weak, in my opinion, about gospel music. Because if it was a threat, think about it. If it was a true threat, it, it, it wouldn't be so... I mean, they wouldn't pump it so much. Just say that if it was a threat. All right? It's not the truth. The truth is always a threat. Okay? That's my point. Number six. This is the sixth question. Why does the black church sissy enjoy gospel music? Again, the black church sissy and gospel music is synonymous. Neither one is a threat. Okay? I'm giving you the answer on that one. All right? Number seven, why do pimps and preachers have so much in common? Why do they have so much in common? Think about it. Like I stated earlier, they both have the same persona, demeanor, dress code, the same taste for exotic cars, women, mental control. All right? Same thing. Okay? If you look at a pimp and you look at a preacher, they look similar. And why is it that preachers, well, why is it that pimps seem to go into the preaching lifestyle once they so-called are retired from pimping? Now remember y'all, pimping is mental, okay? It's all about control, period. You gotta, you gotta know this, all right? All right, I'm going to go to number eight, and it's basically, why do pimps normally become preachers? Now, I know I just said that, but I, I need to address that again. They normally become preachers because the pimping lifestyle has always been looked at as foul, degrading, etc. Now, when they retire from pimping and become a preacher or a pastor, that's, it's more washed up, it's more cleaned up. It's sort of like a politician. They wear a suit, they smile. Um, you think they're the good guys when actually they're just the bad guys with suits on, okay? That's how it works. Number nine, what does the audience or congregation have in common with whores? What does the audience, congregation, have in common with whores? Now you got to think about it. Picture the audience. The audience is in the crowd, the people, congregation that listens to the preacher without knowing anything or having any knowledge or will to study anything. The preacher just stands up and just give them information. Give them information, give them information, and they swallow it whole like a pill, okay? With nothing else to go by, and sell them big dreams. Now think about this, you have a pimp, and you have a whore. The pimp does the same thing to the whore, all right? Think about it, the pimp gives out information to the whore. Gives out information, gives out information, gives out information. She doesn't ask any questions. She just takes the pill, whole, does exactly what he says, and he reaps the benefit just like the preacher. Okay? <clears throat> Think about it. Number 10. Last but not least, why do most black preachers love fried chicken, pretty women, 
expensive suits, lavish homes, exotic cars, eloquent jewelry, sometimes little boys, and get whole slapping mad when you ask for their financial statements in regards to how things are being handled? Answer. Because they are the pimp and you are the hoe. <laughs>